Welcome to The Art of Social Media, a podcast by Social Pilot. We host in-depth discussions with world-leading social media marketing experts that will help you discover the techniques, strategies, and skills you need to use to grow your business using social media. Now, here's your host, Tejas Mehta. One of the very powerful things you talked about is that emotional connection with the brand, uh, emotional connection with the community. You also talk about emotional continuum in your book. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can you yeah. expand on that a little bit? Well, I think this will help people connect the dots and understand the role of what they're doing now and how it connects to community. So almost every business today has some presence on social media, which is great. It's awesome because, I mean, you and I first connected on social media. Many people who have become, who have like read my blog or have become my friends, we started as a, as a, as a connection on social media, but that's a weak relational link. I have 180,000 followers on Twitter. If I put out a tweet and say, Hey, everybody buy my book. I won't sell very many books. It's like throwing a message in a bottle out into the ocean, hoping somebody picks it up. Now the power is you and I can connect. You and I might have never had this opportunity before, but now we've got this spark of opportunity. And the strategy, what I think the social media strategy is today, it's not really a strategy. It's the beginning of a process. And the beginning of that process is you you create this first initial connection. In sales terminology, maybe you call this the top of the funnel, right? And what you want to do is move those connections to an audience. Can those people, can you become interesting enough that those people will subscribe to your podcast or your blog or your video series or your Instagram account? Now you've got a much stronger emotional connection. If I go to the people on my blog and say, I have a new book out, who's going to buy it? Almost everybody, because they, they've opted into me. They subscribe to me. They're saying, it's okay for you to talk to me about what you're doing, because I like you. I'm interested in you. I believe in you. Now, that's where most companies stop. They've got social media. They've got advertising. They've got content marketing. But they don't move. The next step in this process is you move your audience to community. And that's the ultimate marketing. It's the ultimate emotional connection, as we talked about, because now it's not just that people love you, but they also love each other. Now, what happens in my community if I say, I have a new book out? Not only does everybody buy the book, everybody writes a review, everybody promotes it, there's a there's a one woman who um, created like this PowerPoint slide of highlights from the book and narrated this video that she posted on LinkedIn. They're buying multiple books. They're giving them to their friends. That's advocacy. It's not just an audience. These are people who are so connected to you and believe in you so much. They want you to succeed. They will help you in any way they can. Now. If I had, you know, my community right now is small, a couple hundred people. I've had it for a couple of years. But, you know, as, as time goes by, if I had a thousand people, 10,000 people, I would be able to sell more and more with no marketing, no ads, no SEO, no content marketing, no lead nurturing. I simply tell people in my community, I have something new and you know, it results in, in sales. So it's the ultimate marketing with no marketing. (laughs) Interesting. So the emotional continuum then is a journey from that connection on social media to kind of create nurturing them into like an audience and then ultimately transforming them into a community from just community members to advocates. So that's, that's, yeah. Interesting. Uh, You also mentioned that 
uh, before a com- company really kind of forms a community, there's some homework that the company needs to do by themselves. For example, internal culture and yes, other aspects. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, community, like any other type of marketing, is is difficult. It takes time. It takes commitment. It takes resources. And a lot of that success depends on the culture of of the community of the, of the business or the organization. If you have a business that's you know sell sell sell, always be closing. I mean, a community probably isn't isn't going to work. But if you really have a view that we can do something bigger for the world, if we come together and we do it together, and that will help our bottom line as well. If we have this community of people who who believe in us, then then it'll work. We we talked about um, the importance of purpose. Uh, you know, the purpose is different from your marketing strategy. You know, your, your, your marketing strategy, your point of differentiation might be, we have the biggest selection of used cars in the tri-state area. Great. Wonderful. That's appealing to me if I need to buy a car. That's not appealing to me if I want to meet in your Facebook group or come to your dealership because you're having an event. Now, if you bring it, if I'm a, if I love cars and you bring in an engineer from Ford Motor Company talking about their latest designs, that's cool. That will bring me there. That will create discussions because now we have a shared interest in technology and maybe, maybe the environment, maybe sustainability, maybe design. So, so it, it, it really, you know, gets, gets down to, to purpose. And then it also takes a new perspective of, about measurement. You know, I, 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 I'm convinced that maybe the most important measure in, in a community is engagement. And I've been on the record saying that when it comes to social media, that might be the least important metric because it doesn't necessarily really lead to, to ROI. It doesn't really lead to anything. You can you can engage yourself broke. You can have a really popular post and you can engage, 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 engage. Meanwhile, you're not doing your work. So uh it, it's a different mindset. It really is. It's it's a different mindset than traditional marketing leadership. And uh that's exciting and challenging and uh intimidating sometimes but it works and it's, it's also very exciting and rewarding. Interesting. Uh, Which are the brands that come to your mind who are doing this right? Who are doing the community part, right? Oh, there's so many and, and so many that I, uh, that I really love. I think one, one that I'll, that I'll bring up that I think could be an inspiration to your, to your audience is uh, Yeti. So uh, Yeti, uh, I was about, oh, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I started noticing people wearing shirts that said Yeti or or baseball caps that said Yeti, or they had a, a sticker on their laptop that said Yeti. I thought, isn't that an ice cooler? What am I missing here? Why would someone be promoting an ice cooler? I would. It's an ice cooler. That's the that's the way they started. It was a four hundred dollar ice cooler. Now, the first five years of that company's history, they did no advertising. The only marketing they did was word of mouth marketing and community. And I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll <clears throat> tell you a little story. I was at a I was given a speech in Wichita, Kansas. There were a group of college students there. They wanted to take a picture with me. We gathered. So this young woman, she's like 20 years old. She holds up her phone and the whole back of the phone says Yeti. I said, I just got to know because I'm thinking she can't afford a $400 ice cooler. She's 20 years old. I just got to know why do you have that sticker on the back of the phone? And she told me stories for 15 minutes 
about how she loves that brand, how her purpose, her ideals about the outdoors and nature intersect with that company. She belongs to the brand. And she said, I don't have that much money, but at Christmas time, I buy my family members something from Yeti because I believe in them and I want to support them. And that's so, so the reason I use that is because some of the people listening might think, well, can anybody really do this? And I'm thinking, it's an ice cooler. <laughs> Whatever you do in your business, it's probably more interesting than an ice cooler. And they, and they, 100% of their marketing was their community. It's unbelievable. What a story. Interesting. Uh, Patagonia comes to my mind when you talk about outdoor oh, community. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Pretty strong community as well. Uh, yeah. What are the wrong ways of trying to get the community started? Uh, we talked about a lot of right ways, purpose, emotional connect, mission everybody involved what are the wrong ways yeah. well when it comes to wrong ways i'm the poster child because <laughs> <laughs> I, I i mean i failed a community for for years and that's why the community i have right now is one of the reasons why it's so important to me because i realized this might be my less best my last best chance to really do it it's something i never really accomplished in my life we talked about the number one reason why communities fail is because they're you, you're, you're trying to sell something um, that you're um, you, you don't have that intersection of purpose that gets people to meet. One of the problems I had in my early attempts is that I couldn't get it beyond a cult of personality. If I didn't start the conversation, nobody else was really starting the conversation. It just was exhausting. It just didn't seem fair. And so there are some, I, I think you need to do have some activities that ignite the community. You need to have some activities where people can really interact and get to know each other. And once they get to know each other, and it's not just me, then they um, it starts to propel forward. Now, you know, maybe some people are thinking, well, it must be an online community. Yes and no. It could be an offline community. The example I gave of the B2B marketing agency, that's mostly off offline. They really meet in real life every month. And they have an online component that keeps them together in between meetings. You know, my community is mostly online, but we're going to get together in real life this summer for the first time. They're coming to my house. <laughs> you know, that's going to be interesting. Hope, you know, uh, but you know, it's going to be joyful. And when people meet in face to face um, for the first time, that's going to be another one of those ignition switch switches, right? That's going to be another you know, source of source of ignition in 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 the community that gets people to interact with each other instead of just me. So I've failed in all those ways. Um, you know, I think one other reason that communities fail is because they stagnate because they don't let it move forward. You know, they're they're in a certain trench, they're doing a certain thing, and when the community starts to go another way, it it just becomes ir ir irrelevant. So. Um, so those are the those are the main reasons I think that that they they don't succeed. Interesting. Uh, you also talk about metaverse. Uh, is metaverse the next community destination? Is there where new communities are being formed? Well, I think it already is. Um, you know, for for many people, they think of the metaverse as this. You know futuristic thing and maybe it's you know you gotta wear you know the oculus rift and you you, you you know you gotta you know have all this expensive equipment and you you're immersed in this 3d world but i mean i might argue that the the most the most popular social media platform is fortnite 
It's a game. That's the metaverse. It's an it's a immersive game. Uh, you you work together. You collaborate. You you're uh, you you have an avatar. Uh, you know, maybe you wear a headset. Maybe not. Maybe you just have a gaming system. You can buy things. You can create things. You can go to concerts on Fortnite, the game. So the metaverse is already here. And there's lots of examples like that. And that's where young people are already going. That has profound implications for business. You know, number one, uh, many businesses today, um, they run their businesses based on social listening platforms like uh, Sprinkler or Sprout Social or something like that, right? And so you can look at sentiment analysis and see what your customers are doing on LinkedIn and Twitter. Well, what happens when your customers, when most of their conversations are on the metaverse? The young people today, they're not on Facebook. They're not on LinkedIn. They're not on Twitter. They're in Discord. They're on Fortnite. And they're invisible. So how are you going to stay connected with these people? You're going to have to show up in these spaces in some way. So there's a huge opportunity. There's also going to be massive challenges for marketers, especially social media marketers, who depend on these listening platforms because week by week and month by month, they are literally becoming obsolete. Well, yeah, uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, future to see. Uh, hopefully, we'll see some more articles on the futuristic part of it, uh, on Metaverse. Uh, the gaming, of course, is, is pretty awesome. Uh, Fortnite and Call of Duty, they have their own universes, and it works out very well. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how brands leverage that, how brands kind of become part of the community. So that's something to be seen. Uh, good to know. Wonderful. Uh, any parting thoughts on community uh, that you have not covered? Well, I think I would just sum things up by pointing out, um, uh, you had mentioned the Marketing Rebellion book. We, today, we've been talking about belonging to the brand, why community is the last great marketing strategy. Uh, yeah, I think you, we mentioned the title, but that's that's the book about community. But the subtitle of Marketing Rebellion that you mentioned in my introduction is The Most Human Company Wins. And I believe that's true. How you show up in the world, you know, how you show your face and show your heart and show your compassion and people want to hear your voice and they want to get to know you, that's true. And I think community is the ultimate way to do that. So I think The Most Human Company Wins and I think there's just, a, it's the great, it's the most Overlooked opportunity in the history of overlooked opportunities in marketing, but I think the time is now. Interesting. Uh, ball from my end. Uh, what is the next future trend that you are thinking about already? Well, um, you know, I think there's there's just going to be a lot of things going on with with you know with mental health with and, and new technology. I think artificial intelligence, I mentioned this in the book briefly, but I mean, artificial intelligence is 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 changing everything. I mean, I was an early adopter of ChatGPT and I wrote a blog post and I wrote these words that I've never written before in my life. This changes everything. This changes marketing forever. I didn't even say that with the, with the internet because it took us a few years to figure out what the internet was about. Um, but this is now a mass adoption of artificial intelligence through a format that's as easy to use as Google. And that is profound. And it's just starting. And the way it's impacting us 12 months from now is going to be dramatically different from even where we are in this moment. Um, so it was the fastest adoption of technology in history I think it's going to be the fastest transformation of business in history. I think it's going to affect careers. I think it's going to affect lives, uh, relationships, how we connect, how we create, how we do business together. Uh, it's, it's, it's profound. 
interesting. Uh, but that's uh, that's you... that's a show for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Where can people find you online? It's very easy. Uh, you don't even have to remember my name. If you can remember Businesses Grow, you can find my blog, my podcast, my books, and all my social connections. Wonderful. Mark, thank you so much for your time. Really wonderful chatting with you. Uh, very insightful details on community. I have just started with the book. I'm uh, sure to finish it by the end of the month. And uh, uh, I'll I'll drop into your place in the summer gathering of the community. So yeah, yeah I'm happy to meet you. Yeah. Well, I've got instructions at the end of the book on how to join my community. So I hope you'll join. We'd love to have you wonderful. there. It's, it's free and open to everybody. It's a pleasure, Mark. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. The Art of Social Media is brought to you by Social Pilot. To find out more about Social Pilot and how we can give you everything you need to hit your social media marketing goals, visit socialpilot.co. And then make sure to search for The Art of Social Media in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click follow so you don't miss any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Social Pilot, thanks for listening. <laughs>